Okay, hands up if you're bored of the paths tool yet. Um, this is going to be part three of the vector art tutorial uh, series. Um, it's also part three of my paths tutorial series. I didn't realise I was going to make a whole series just on the paths. Um, there's going to be one more part after this one, looking specifically at the paths, and then we're going to move on to some other stuff, um, particularly brushes and things like that. But today's tutorial, we're going to be looking particularly at the selection tool as a drawing tool as well. Um, now I've said in the past that many people tend to use the paths tool as a selection tool despite the fact that it probably comes into its own most when it's used as a drawing tool. Now obviously most people use the selection tools just as regular selection tools as well but again they can be very powerful and very um, quick and effective at rendering quite nice drawing as well. Um, and this image that I've made here, um, firstly the font is called Bleeding Cowboys and that can be uh, downloaded from dafont.com. But the rest of the image um, is just very very simple um, drawn using the selection tools. And I'm going to quickly show you some of the little tricks to make something like this very quickly. So what we're going to be looking at first, as I said, is going to be the selection tools and how we can draw with them. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a new window. So I'll minimize this one and open up a new one. And I'll keep it black for today. We'll work black and red because it's quite nice, quite distinctive. Oh, actually, for the sakes of this, it's probably best if we uh, we use a white background. So I'll just set these back to the default and fill that in and if we give it a a black background as well then if we cut stuff out later oh, we should do that um, we we'll just very quickly paint that black okay so as I said we're going to look at the selection tools first as drawing tools so the first thing we're going to do is just pick one of our selection tools I'm going to use the ellipse select tool or the circle select tool um, if we draw a very simple circle um, that hasn't drawn anything for us at the moment. You'll notice um, on the background we've got here, this layer that's called background, um, there's no actual drawing on it. You can't see anything. Um, all we've got at the moment is the marching ants and the box around it oh, and the box around it that will let us drag the handles to change the size and shape of the, box, uh, the circle. Um, but we haven't actually got a drawing yet. To turn this into a drawing, um, there's a few things we can do. Firstly, if I use the shortcut keys, control and comma, it will fill in the selection with the foreground color, in this case, black. If I press control and period, or control and full stop, if you're British like me, then it will give us the background color. So if I change these colors, for example, if I have red as my background color, then if I press control and period now it turns it red control and comma and we've got a black circle so that's fairly straightforward now say I don't actually want to um, have a full black circle but instead I want to stroke the circle um, the same way I'd stroke a path well the way I need to do that um, firstly if I draw my circle what I now need to do is actually convert this circle into a path. So I can go over to the uh, layers dialog, uh, sorry, the paths dialog, and you'll notice that the only selection I have at the moment, apart from a new path, will be this one here, selection to path. And that does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it turns the selection that we've currently got into a path. And you can see that jumps up there. So if I make that visible, press B to get my paths tool and just click on the edge. Now I don't know if you've tried to do it yet, but if you try to draw a circle or an ellipse using the paths tool and only the paths tool, you will find it is incredibly frustrating and will drive you crazy almost instantly. Um, there are many, many more points to a perfect ellipse or a perfect circle than we probably really appreciate. For example, if I was just going to quickly try and draw one um, by doing this kind of thing, oh that's terrible, uh, and then just kind of dragging that round and then you know just trying to make the curves into some sort of ellipse you can see that the kind of it goes all over the place and it's rubbish you cannot draw um, 
easily, I mean it's not to say it's impossible, but you cannot easily draw um, a perfect ellipse. Whereas if you use the selection tool, you can draw a perfect ellipse, as long as you remember to convert your selection to a path using this button. Once you've got your path, then we just go through the normal steps for stroking a path. So you can go to your tool options, and then stroke path, select something like 2 pixels or 3 pixels, depending on the width you want, press stroke, and when we get rid of all of the bump we don't need, you'll see the circle that you've got. I'm just going to quickly minimize this and bring it back up because uh, it gets a bit bitty if I don't do that. So there we've got a perfect ellipse drawn for us. So just to recap, the way we've done that, we've used the selection tool and then we've stroked the path once we've converted the selection to a path. So that's fairly straightforward as well. Um, the final thing we're going to look at is making slightly more complex paths using the selection tool and then drawing with those. So if I just clear everything that I've got so far and I'll just paint that white again so we can see what I'm doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Now just say I wanted to draw something like a crescent moon. Um, we can draw a circle um, very simply. Now if I hold down control um, my selection tool will um, take away from the original selection. So if I draw another circle um, you can see that the marching ants now only follows around where my original circle was and the parts that my second circle hasn't cut into. Um, and that's given us this kind of crescent moon shape. If I was to press control and comma that would fill that in for us um, but I'll just undo that. If I just want to sketch the outline I need to go back over to my paths dialog turn the selection into a path and then very simply um, with my paths tool and with that selected oh I've gone onto the wrong one there just get rid of that with that selected we can just stroke that path with the line width we want and there we have it um, a perfect little crescent moon um, and that's pretty much all there is for this tutorial um, there's quite a few shortcut keys to get your head around in this one so I'm going to leave those as usual in the more information bar next to the video um, if you've got any questions about applications for this or if you want me to explain something because I've kind of done this off the top of my head without notes then feel free to post a response or even a, a video response if you have Cam Studio or Camtasia or something like that um, and then I can obviously try and help you from there again this wasn't a particularly useful um, or clearly interesting or fun tutorial but it's some of the sort of skills and shortcuts and little tricks that will come into play a lot more heavily when we start looking at more creative vector art anyway so I hope you found this at least useful and um, I'm going to very quickly make another tutorial about how to save your paths and how to download other people's paths if all of this seems like far too much hard work and uh, I hope to see you next time thanks very much for watching